What's happening, everybody? On today's show, Quinshawn Judkins leaving Ole Miss, Jam Griffin as well. What is going on out there in Oxford? Thought everybody was running it back. Locked on SEC starts right now. You are Locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's up, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. It's great to have you guys along. Today's episode brought to you by the Game Time app. Download Game Time today. Create an account. Use our code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Shout out to our everydayers. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. All right, the big news coming out of Oxford yesterday as Quinshawn Judkins announcing he is entering the transfer portal. We said, what in the world is going on? We had to call on our old bat friend, Brad Logan, uh, to find out what is going on. Brad, of course, is a contributor to Inside the Rebels at 24-7 Sports, the Logan Media Network. He does it all. Brad, welcome in, man. What is going on there in Oxford? Hey, it's good to see you, Chris. Yeah, it's been a lot happening, and and we learned – um, earlier that uh, Quinshawn Juckets would enter the transfer portal. And then, of course, it would drop later that Jam Griffin, the transfer running back, would enter the portal as well. Now, Jam Griffin, much more of a uh, a, a plot player, comes in, uh, didn't play a lot down the stretch, played a ton of special teams, really good special teams player. But uh, once again, Chris, neither of these portal additions are a surprise to the Ole Miss coaching staff. Uh, and it's a situation to where – uh, Quinshawn Judkins was one of the best running backs that Ole Miss has seen in a number of years. A great find by Ole Miss head coach Lane Kiffin. We've seen the picture when he was at Pike Road High School when he was in the stands. And, of course, we would learn later that he would be, uh, a couple of years later, be one of the best to to do it. In fact, the last running back since Herschel Walker to uh, get 15-plus touchdowns in both his freshman and sophomore year. So, Quinshawn, a great player, appears to be headed elsewhere. So, now the question is, Chris, what direction do Ole Miss uh, do they go? And I expect they'll be very, very active in the transfer portal. Well, let's touch a little bit on Quinshawn because I remember two years ago um, when they got him, you know, he's a freshman signee and all this. But I remember my buddy from uh, over in in Dallas telling me all about this Ulysses Bentley kid that was going to be coming mm-hmm. in. And, you know, he was going to be a good, nice compliment to him and all this kind of stuff. And then they had the kid, uh, forget his name, that transferred Kedrick to, Risky, Kedrick to Miami. Riscano? No, yeah. no, no, the kid who uh, went to uh, Miami that was – A uh, uh, Parrish. Pa- yeah, Parrish. Yeah. Like, they had a bunch of all these good running backs the last couple of years, but Judkins is the guy who hit hit us on the scene two years ago that really started turning some heads, and uh, and I know Bentley was a little banged up, and that kind of opened the door for, for Judkins to have the freshman season that he did. But, my God, two seasons of 2,700 yards combined, 34 uh, touchdowns in that time. Like, this is a, this is a big-time playmaker. Um, I understand some things went wrong here, but if you're Ole Miss, is it is it as simple as, look, this wasn't going to work out? I mean, why would you not go to bat, uh, in other words, and make everything you can happen to keep this guy? Well, you've watched Slane Kiffin uh, specifically on the recruiting trail. He's always seems to be two steps ahead. And uh, I, I do feel per- very comfortable in, in, in people that have been reporting that there were obviously a situation to where uh, the Ole Miss Grove Collective under the tutelage of Walker Jones has been going kind of back and forth with the camps of Ulysses, uh, I, I'm sorry, with the camps of Quinshawn Jenkins and just didn't come to terms, Chris. And I think that's where this stands is, is, is the communication has kind of dropped off between the two camps. And I expect Quinson Jenkins to, uh, to be playing for someone else next fall. The question is, is, is where that might be. Uh, I do not think it will be Ole Miss. I do not think that both Ole Miss and Quinshawn's camp can come to terms. Um, I think the, the can's been kicked too far down the road. And I think Ole Miss did everything it could to secure Quinshawn Jenkins to a certain extent. And I think Quinshawn probably has a, a number in mind, and Ole Miss obviously didn't meet that number. Uh, now you look at the 24 class, and I'm sorry, the 24 season, and what happens? I think Lucy's Bentley fits Lane Kiffin's offense perfectly. He's very good side to side. Uh, he's very quick, and I think being the number one back, if they can make sure they get him secured, remember he's got one more year, but we haven't heard from him. So uh, I do expect that, that Quinshawn will move on, and I expect Ulysses Bentley to be the number one back next year. Depending on what Lane Kiffin and, and Kevin Smith and that rested offensive staff under Charlie Weiss does in the transfer portal, do we expect Ole Miss to be very active in the transfer portal? Uh, the question is, is, is what direction might they go? Uh, you'd like to have at least – 
uh, three to four scholarship running backs. And now that we see that Jam Griffin is gone, it appears that Quinshawn Juckin is gone. Uh, at the minimum, I expect Ole Miss to bring in two additional running backs. Remember, uh, Kedrick Riscano, a true freshman, is someone that Kevin Smith, Lane Kiffin, and Charlie Weiss like a whole lot. Uh, they were able to bring him in. Uh, they missed on Kiwan Lacey. They really like the talented running back out of Texas. He's now at Alabama. So the question is, is there someone that might enter the portal? Remember, uh, Chris, you've got five days after your bowl game to enter the portal. So you look at what teams uh, play on the same day as Ole Miss. Are there some players on that roster? Are there some players on uh, maybe an Alabama roster or maybe a Michigan roster that may enter the portal? So very interesting times for Ole Miss. I don't have to tell you or the listeners or the people watching that this 24 season that's upcoming for Ole Miss is the biggest one on paper uh, in history. And so seeing two players, specifically Quinshawn Jenkins into the portal, is a big day for Ole Miss one way or the other. Yeah, I want to circle back. We'll circle back to uh, Ole Miss heading into next year. But just to kind of close it out, Judkins, he did put out a, a note to uh, Ole Miss fans and, you know, saying thank you you know so much for the time there and, and that sort of thing. But – we talk about destinations. I mean, if it is as simple as, hey, <laughs> look, this is free agency and I'm going to the highest bidder, get me the best NIL deal. Um, is there a chance he goes, you know, look, in a perfect scenario, he jumps out to the West Coast or to a Big Ten team and you don't hear about him. But we've seen a lot of guys this offseason, Brad, go to another SEC school. Right. So, um, I mean, I've heard Tennessee maybe could mm -hmm. be in play. Auburn could make a phone call. So, uh, I mean, is Ole Miss worried at all about Quinchon jumping to somebody who's on their schedule next year? Well, you know, you talked about Auburn, and then, of course, that's head coach Hugh Freeze. Prior to, to Freeze's arrival, he was very much courted hard by Auburn. You know, Pike Road High School is not far from Auburn, and I do think Auburn's definitely a, de a destination, and, and who be it uh, that Hugh Freeze, the former Ole Miss coach, to grab the former Ole Miss player. The, the key element in that, Chris, is Ole Miss doesn't play Auburn next year, so that wouldn't really you know, pose much of a threat to the Rebels. I think Colorado's always hanging out there. They're a team that likes to dabble in the transfer portal with Deion Sanders, and you've got the big-time players out there. I think you know Clemson, Ohio State, uh, and, and you know the, the teams like that. The question is, is, is what's the number for Judkins, and are they willing to pay the number? Uh, I think – Someone uh, posted earlier that his value, I think, it on three is over is like five hundred thousand dollars, and the teams may look to pay to double that. And, and the question is, is, are running backs worth one million dollars for one season? You know, I don't know. That's not for me to decide. That's for a collector's decision. I think for Ole Misses, I don't know what the number was for Ole Miss, and I don't know what the number was for Quinshawn. But obviously, that number was not the same because we saw him enter the portal. I will say. The Grove Collective, led by Walker Jones, I, I, I was told uh, during Bowl Week that the, the uh, that the Grove Collective and members of the Grove Collective felt good about Quinchon Judkins coming back for his uh, for the twenty four season. Obviously, that communication broke down between the end of the bowl game and today. So uh, it does appear that Quinchon Judkins has moved on, and now Chris, we have learned that Jam Griffin, the transfer running back, has moved on as well. So. Ole Miss will have to go fishing once again, and we'll have to see those Lane Kiffin GIFs uh, fishing because they're going to need a couple of running backs. Yeah, it's just wild. Jam Griffin, by the way, rushed for almost 500 yards at Oregon State two seasons ago and uh, was there. I mean, it, it's wild on the same day. Like, you would think he would at least wait it out and go, oh, the guy in front of me just left. Now i got a great right. opportunity. But uh, it, it is wild because, Brad, the whole mantra we've heard the last few weeks from Ole Miss is, man, they are going out. The Grove Collective is going to work. They're getting all these big stars. And what I like about it is, proven stars in the sec it's not like you're going to get a big time edge rusher from iowa or something you're getting dudes that played in the sec and, right. and proven talent and we know pete golden can be a good defensive coordinator he just needs the jimmies and the joes and it looks like they've done a great job of doing that so talk a little bit about obviously expectations raised next year for Ole miss the schedule is absolutely navigatable and all this new talent coming in i mean this sets up huge for Ole miss despite the loss of quinn john well, Chris, I think Ole Miss needs to go heavy on offensive line. They're bringing in a couple of offensive linemen, uh, one confirmed this weekend. And I do expect Ole Miss to be very uh, vibrant in the offensive line transfer portal. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, you know, I think if you bring in a couple of running backs to kind of offset the loss of Quinchon Junkins, that's opening up some capital from the Ole Miss collective to be able to utilize in other spots. And I think they're going to utilize that on offensive line. So I think those are the two obvious areas of concern now that the loss of Judkins and Griffin. Defensively, we'll have to see what happens with John Saunders Jr. Um, he hasn't decided whether he's coming back or not. If that's the case, and Ole Miss is going to have to go to the portal 
or lean on heavy on some of the uh, the high school recruits that they've got coming in for that defensive backfield. But I expect if you know we'll we'll wait and see what happens with Saunders uh, on the back half of that secondary. But at the end of the day, I think Ole Miss has navigated very well through the portal. I think the way that, that, that Pete Golding has recruited the defensive line, we haven't seen Ole Miss recruit defensive talent like this on paper in the history of the uh, the program. And so being able to have that talent on defense in the 24 season, complementing with the talent you have coming back with Jeremiah Pegues at defensive tackle, along with Jared Ivey at defensive end, Ole Miss is going to have the one of the best defensive lines in the SEC. Uh, so not to mention how well they did in the high school ranks. And then you start talking about bringing in Walter Nolan and some of those other big-time players, Princely, Umalimilan, the defensive end out of Florida. So it's going to be, uh, be interesting to see. But, yeah, big news uh, big news by losing uh, Quinshawn Jukins. Now the question is, the portal giveth, the portal taketh away, and Ole Miss is taking the uh, the backside of it today. Well, look, the way they've run the football the last two years, it seems like uh, that would be a very attractive uh, opening for a lot of guys out there who want to come be a featured back at Ole Miss. And certainly, uh, um, you know, the last few years, they've they've done a good job rotating. As good as Quinchon has been, they still found time and, you know, to, to get – you know, think back to a couple of years ago from Snoop Connor and, you know, like Henry, Henry Parrish, like guys still got work in there. So, um, you know, even if you're sitting there third string, uh, you can get some get some work in. And maybe Jim Griffin's just looking for a little bit of extra money from Ole Miss. Maybe he's like, hey, I'll stay. Just give me a little mo- bit of money. And that's the crazy part about this, too, Brad, is one day we report so and so's in the portal. The next day we just saw one of the defensive backs at Georgia. 48 hours later, he's like, I'm staying. So you yeah. wonder how much of this is guys just wanting a little sure. bit of pay and you get it right. It's, it's legal now, but uh, it's absolutely wild uh, on, on this whole front. But uh, Brad, it's going to be very excited to see what Ole Miss does uh, heading into next year, man. You talk about Lane Kiffin being a guy that, you know, a, a little over a year ago, maybe one foot out the door. Was he entertaining Auburn to now I'm locked in long-term to Ole Miss. And not only am I locked in, but we just won 11 wins, you know, 11 games for the first time ever. And we're going to build off that next year and, I'll be a playoff team. It's just crazy how how wild this thing turned around so quick. There's no doubt. And you talked about two running backs, Henry Paris Jr. and Snoop Connor. Remember, Jaron Ely was a part of that backfield, too. Yeah, yeah. Ole Miss led the SEC in rushing with that backfield. And now it's probably going to take a three to four running back effort. I expect Ole Miss will probably get that for the 24 run. And now all eyes are on that portal to see who else Ole Miss can get in that running back room. Brad, great stuff as always, man. Good to uh, catch up with you. And uh, if I don't see you before then, I'll see you in Dallas at SEC Media Days, all right? Look forward to it. Thanks, Chris. All right. That's uh, Brad Logan there. Does a great job over there at, uh, again, contributed inside the Rebels at 24-7 Sports. And we always enjoy uh, talking with him. All right. When we jump back into it, we got plenty more to discuss here on Locked on SEC. Thank you guys again for making us your first listen every day. Uh, Coming up next, the Alabama exodus. We'll talk about that in just a sec. But first, I want to remind you guys, this episode is presented to my friends over at FanDuel. We know the NFL regular season is wrapping up this weekend. We also have the college football championship on Monday night. And there's no time to a uh, better time to get in on the action than right now with FanDuel. They are America's number one sports book. Right now, you can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. Their app is super easy to use. Uh, so many different ways to get on the action. Live same game parlays. You can find the new bets in the new Explore tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. Look, if you haven't bet on sports before and you've been thinking about getting into it, go check them out right now. Go visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make your first bet a layup. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on today. They are FanDuel. They are the official partner of the NFL. And again, our preferred uh, uh, piece to use right here on Locked On SEC. FanDuel.com slash Locked On. All right, roll along here. Locked On SEC. And look, man, we got plenty more to discuss here. Um, we're just scratching the surface. Quinchon Judkins news coming out yesterday, and then uh, the other running back. It was just crazy day uh, for SEC news. But let's dive back into it. We got a lot to get into. Let's go around the conference. Boots out to the right. Makes the handoff. Throws. 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 Around the conference. All right, next stop, we stop over at Alabama, where they have had tons of movement. So let's get you caught up in the last 24 hours 
over at uh, Tuscaloosa with the Crimson Tide. All right, according to Matt Zenitz of 24-7 Sports, D-lineman Tim Smith is leaning towards returning to the Crimson Tide. He started for them the last two seasons, saw time in all 14 games this year, started in nine of them, 31 tackles, two sacks, was expected to garner some NFL interest, but uh, he was going to use that COVID fifth year option. So Tim Smith expected to come back for Alabama. Also, Alabama linebacker Deontay Lawson looks to be putting off going pro for another year. Matt Zenitz reporting Lawson is expected to come back to school instead of declaring for the draft. Playing 11 games this year, didn't miss a few with injury, but had uh, six tackles in the Rose Bowl, finished second on the team with 67 total tackles, five and a half tackles for a loss, three sacks, a bunch of quarterback hurries. Deontay Lawson was very good this year, and uh, th those are two big returnees for Alabama, Tim Smith and Deontay Lawson. Now let's hit on the exits. They got a lot of dudes leaving. Uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry is going pro, former five-star recruit, big-time in-state prospect, uh, had a breakout performance in 2022. He confirmed on Thursday he is going pro. He put up a message saying, I'm proud of what I accomplished at the University of Alabama. With that, I'm ready to take the next step and declare for the draft. Also, Terry and Arnold expected to enter the draft this year. Chris Lowe from ESPN reporting both, uh, both those guys in – Kool-Aid and Tarion are heading to the pros. Now, there are reports that Malachi Moore has let the stat, the Tide staff know that he will come back next year. So it's not a full wash in the secondary, but Tarion Arnold leaves Tuscaloosa after three seasons, solidified a corner spot as a redshirt sophomore, and uh, among or he tied for the SEC league lead with 16 passes defended, uh, was named first team all SEC by the conference coaches. I mean, he, he was fantastic this year. So Kool-Aid McKinstry and Terry and Arnold moving on. Sounds like Malachi Moore is coming back. Other pieces leaving, and these are no surprise. O off offensive lineman J.C. Latham had a uh, a really solid junior season. He is, if you look at any of the mock drafts, J.C. Latham is a lock as a first-round pick, so uh, he is going pro. Dallas Turner, of course, he announced it right after the Rose Bowl ended. Said, yeah, I'm done here. I'm, I'm going pro. No surprise there. Both those guys projected as first-round picks. Uh, another guy, linebacker Chris Braswell, moving on from Alabama. He's declared for the NFL draft and uh, was at Alabama for four seasons. Had a little eligibility remaining, but uh, he is going pro. And then lastly, Justin Aboigby, five seasons at Alabama, the big defensive lineman, played 56 games over five seasons. Had the option with you know the COVID year, but um, he's heading off to the pros. He was named first team all SEC by the conference coaches for the 2023 season. So mark that as Justin Aboigby, Dallas Turner, JC Latham, Chris Bat Braswell, along with Terry Arnold, Kool-Aid McKinstry, all gone. I mean, those are all big time playmakers on that Alabama defense, and they are all off to the next level. One other one with Alabama, wide receiver Malik Benson. He entered the transfer portal on Wednesday. He was the former member number one JUCO wide receiver our number one JUCO prospect last year out of Hutchinson Community College. Caught uh, 13 passes for 162 yards this year and uh, did not appear in the Tides games against Georgia or Michigan. He originally chose Alabama over the likes of LSU and Oregon, Tennessee, Georgia. I mean, he had a ton of offers, but Malik Benson hitting the transfer portal. He will not be back at Alabama. All right, other news going on around the conference at LSU. The Tigers could be poaching a defensive coordinator from a fellow SEC team. If you read uh, between the lines here, Blake Baker, a guy who was once an assistant coach at LSU, has been the defense coordinator at Missouri, and made them into a big-time contender, a unit that was ranked 113th nationally in total defense just two years ago. They finished 25th overall this year. Missouri has been very, very good uh, on defense, finished 11th in total sacks this year. Uh, Baker coached linebackers at LSU in 2021, was the defensive coordinator at Louisiana Tech a few years prior to that. He did just sign a contract extension two weeks ago to stay at Missouri. But as we know, contracts sometimes aren't worth the paper they're written on. But uh, LSU looking for a new defensive coordinator. They fired Matt House on Wednesday. They also let go uh, cornerbacks coach Robert Steeples, safeties coach Kerry Cooks, D-line coach Jimmy Lindsay. So, Brian Kelly said this defense is not up to par. We got to make some changes. So uh, we'll be interested to see if they 
you know, is it a bidding war with Mizzou to get Blake Baker, or does Blake Baker come out and tell LSU, no thanks, thanks, but no thanks. I am happy staying here. We will see. One other uh, note on LSU. If you missed it uh, earlier this week, uh, Harlem Berry, elite 2025 running back from the New Orleans area, number one running back recruit in 2025. He announced his commitment to LSU. So we'll see if he remains committed to LSU, you know, for the next year. But um, big time pickup there for Brian Kelly. A class of 2025 already has seven verbal commitments, including number one five-star wide receiver DeCorian Moore. And there's a chance we're going to find out uh, in a couple of days if LSU can get a commitment from the number one quarterback in the country, and Bryce Underwood. I mean, wouldn't that be something? If LSU, Brian Kelly signed the number one running back, number one quarterback, number one receiver, watch out for LSU. They are coming. All right, we got more news to hit on going on around the conference. We'll touch on that in just a second as Georgia dips into the transfer portal to add an experienced wide receiver to the mix. We'll tell you who that is in just a sec. I want to remind you guys about our friends over at Game Time. Uh, you should not have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big sporting event. Game Time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all your favorite sporting events, uh, music, comedy, theater, whatever it is. They got killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time is going to take all the guesswork out of buying tickets for yourself. Game Time, the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You could see the view from your seat before you buy. That's my favorite part. You know exactly what to expect when you arrive. A couple weeks ago, I went to an NFL game, used the Game Time app. They showed me the view from my seat. As soon as I sat there, I had to take a picture because it, it was the exact same view that they showed on the app of what this, the view of the field looked like. It was uh, it was perfect. All in prices. They show you your total up front, so you're not getting haggled with extra fees and all that. Click the all in prices. You know your total before you even hit checkout. And of course, when you get uh, when you go to checkout and you buy tickets in seconds with just two taps in your phone. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use our code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem our code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. here locked on sec before we uh call it a show a few more tidbits we need to dive into so let's dive right back into it as uh more portal news and everything else let's make a stop over at georgia with kirby smart as yesterday usc that's the uh southern cal trojans they're a wide receiver michael jackson the third announced he is transferring to georgia Jackson comes to Georgia after three seasons with USC playing in 24 games. Dealt with some injuries. He has not used a red shirt and be considered a true senior with Georgia this coming year. His most productive year came in 2022, playing eight games at 17 catches for 236 yards and four touchdowns. This past year, he played nine games, 17 catches, 146 yards, and one touchdown. He has experience as a punt returner. Um, Originally from the Las Vegas area, was a four-star recruit, number 59 wide receiver back in the class of 2021. So Michael Jackson the third. You got to think when he uh if and when he scores a touchdown for Georgia Bulldogs, you gotta play like a Michael Jackson song, right? I'm sure he hasn't gotten that a million times. But uh Graham Coffey, Graham Coffey put out there, he said uh, Georgia, new Georgia wide receiver Michael Jackson the third has some juice, very explosive after the catch. Made some big plays in big spots the last couple of years. Could be a steal for the Bulldogs. So, uh, Michael Jackson, see if he can moonwalk in the end zone. Other uh, news out there. Good news for Billy Napier. Look, it's been an offseason of not the best news, right? <laughs> like, uh, or how the season ended and then losing guys on, up at, uh, on signing day. But Grayson Pup Howard, member of South Carolina linebacker, we told you a couple days ago, entered the portal. Well, He's going to continue his career at Florida. It's a homecoming for him. He's uh, originally from the Jacksonville area. Now he'll play down the road in Gainesville. He announced the news on social media. Departs uh, South Carolina after one season with the Gamecocks. Played in 11 games as a reserve. Had 19 tackles over the year. Had a forced fumble in their win over Vanderbilt. But uh, he will be replacing another 
K-9 linebacker in Gainesville. Uh, Gators lose linebacker Scooby Williams, left free of the portal, and now they bring in Pup Howard. So a little bit of a dog reference there. Uh, some news over at LSU as Major Burns, starting safety, who started his career over at Georgia, has been at LSU the last couple of years. He announced he is coming back for another season at LSU. He's played 33 games over four seasons at Georgia and LSU combined. Uh, this past year was the first time he started every game, first time making double-digit appearance appearances, posted career highs of 93 tackles, four passes defended, and uh, – Going to bring back some some big experience for that secondary. And we'll see, you know, can this LSU defense be much improved under whoever their new defense coordinator will be? Or was Matt House the problem? We'll find that out very quickly. Uh, did have another Florida note in here. As uh, we may kind of mentioned it Chris Marlar on the show yesterday, but Florida starting defensive back Jason Marshall repeat, uh, revealed he will be coming back for another season. Uh Passed up some high-round projections of the 2024 NFL Draft to return to Florida. So, there used to be a starting corner for Billy Napier next year. They had uh, some nice freshmen and Jordan Castell and Bryce Thornton. So, uh, congrats to Jason Marshall heading back to Florida next season. Other SEC news over at uh, Mississippi State. We don't talk about them a whole lot, but Jeff Lebby getting a big-time prospect, a four-star prospect out of Starkville, Braylon Burnside, opted, opting to stay home and play for Mississippi State. He announced on Wednesday at the Under Armour All-American game. He's a four-star wide receiver, uh, decommitted from Mississippi State back on November 6th, but ultimately chose Jeff Lebby over Ole Miss. It was an Egg Bowl recruiting war, and Braylon Burnside going to play for Mississippi State, and Jeff Levy joins Mississippi State recruiting class that ranked uh, number 34 overall, 24 total recruits. He becomes the 13th player from the state of Mississippi in that class. Over at Texas A&M, uh, one of their veteran linebackers formally declared for the NFL draft, Chris Russell Jr., played linebacker at A&M since 2019, 112 tackles, put out a message that grateful for his time in College Station, but he is declaring for the NFL draft. Also, Texas A&M did pick up a transfer from a Big Ten sack leader, Nick Scorton, a former Purdue pass rusher, led the Big Ten with 10 sacks, finished fourth in the league with 15 tackles for a loss. He will come to the SEC to play for Mike Elko and company. Uh, he was the top edge prospect in the transfer portal and number eight player overall, according to 24-7 Sports, in the portal. So Nick Scorton. S-C-O-R-U-R-T-O-N. See him coming off the edge for the Texas A&M Aggies. And just a couple more nuggets here over at Arkansas. Former Arkansas linebacker Jaheim Thomas. We knew he had entered the portal. Well, he is going to go join Luke Fickle at Wisconsin. Jaheim Thomas played for Fickle at Cincinnati from 2020 to 2022 before he transferred into Arkansas. Led the Razorbacks with 90 tackles. Accounted for six and a half tackles for a loss and three and a half sacks this year. Played at least 12 games or more over the last two seasons, and now he's going to go back to play for the guy he originally started his career with, and that is Luke Fickle up there now at Wisconsin. But Arkansas, they lost their quarterback, K.J. Jefferson, to Central Florida. They lost Raheem Rocket Sanders. They're running back to South Carolina. And now they lose one of their big-time playmakers on defense in Jaheim Thomas. It's going to be an overhaul of new pieces there. At Arkansas, they did bring in a couple of big-time signees, Bradley Shaw, Justin Logan, Wyatt Simmons, and then, uh, of course, in the portal, bringing in Georgia linebacker Xavier Sori. Uh, they also are reportedly going to add an offensive assistant familiar with Bobby Petrino, zeroing in on Ronnie Fuch, or Fouch, F-O-U-C-H, uh, looking for him to become the new wide receivers coach. Currently the co-offense coordinator for Missouri State. And uh, worked under Bobby Petrino when he was the head coach there before he left to go be the OC at Texas A&M. So he will replace uh, Kenny Guyton, who was hired away by Wisconsin. So see if Sam Pittman can make it happen this year and save his job there for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Going to have to win some more games. All right. Thank you guys so much for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Shout out to our everydayers. Uh, come on back tomorrow or Monday on the show. It's the weekend already. We got some uh, great interviews we, we got uh, down at the Sugar Bowl, which I haven't been able to bring you guys yet. We got a one-on-one -on -one interview with Tim Tebow. 
talked a little bit about you know, the SEC next year with him. So we'll get to that uh, next week. And then we'll also hear a little bit from Greg McElroy. I talked with him about Texas and Oklahoma coming to the SEC. So we'll bring you both of those conversations next week on Locked on SEC. You don't want to miss it. Uh, thank you for making it your first listen every day. Now for your second listen, check out Locked on Sports Today on YouTube. It's a 24-7 uh, sports channel covering the top sports stories of the day from our national experts. Again, Locked on Sports Today right there, streaming live on YouTube. I'm Chris Gordy. It's been Locked on SEC. Everybody have a safe weekend out there. Uh, you know, we'll be watching the national championship on Monday, even though no SEC team is in. It's going to suck. But uh, Michigan versus Washington. Boo. We'll talk to you guys next week.